Buffalo, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, What are the effects of being around someone who is extremely selfish, narcissistic? What are the effects? Whether short-term or long-term, doesn't matter. There is side effects to being around a person who is narcissistic and therefore showing narcissistic abuse. We have individuals who have come through here who have had their share of anxieties and depression. They've had mood swings, short-term and memory loss. Uh, they've had their sense of self-worth diminish. They've had post-traumatic stress. They've had their share of headaches. I know family members personally who went through all sorts of aches. It was the headaches. It was the body aches. It was the stomach aches. It was the trouble sleeping. Every time I get around this person, they're draining me of injury or of energy, <laughs> right? Yeah. Providing some emotional injury as well. Um, you know, it's a lot to be around these sorts of people. This is why God tells us to cut away, to cut off, to create distance, to go low contact, no contact, Okay. Um, but some individuals, they don't do this sort of thing. And so after a while, I can't continue to talk to them about their narcissistic family members and friends. I can't do it because the energy that, uh, you know, they, they siphon off of it, it's, it's draining and I don't want to be drained. I've got to be here for my children. I've got to be here, you know, for people who rely on me for a good word, right? I'm a mere vessel. God knows I can only take but so much. And so this is why I'm short. I'm just short in, in conversation and time with uh, folks who I know that there's some narcissistic drama and trauma and effects of being around narcissists that's going on. And now you're treating me in the way that you've been treated. And I can't, I can't do that. Okay. Some people don't recognize that that's what they do, but they do it. So, um, you feel like you're not yourself around a narcissist. Sometimes they don't want you to be yourself. They want you to be whatever they have called you to be, told you that you should be. Even some will go so far as to say, well, God told me. And then if you're impressionable, you're trying to walk in the way that uh, that person wants you to be. Okay. This is why we go to scripture. What does the Bible say that I'm supposed to be? I know I heard Nicole's audio message and what have you. I just want to make sure it aligns with scripture. Oh, okay. It aligns with scripture. Good. All right. So that's nothing but God, right? Depersonalization can consist of a detachment within the self regarding one's mind or body or being a detached observer of oneself. Okay. So people that are going through something with a narcissist. They feel like they're divorced from their own personal self as not belonging to the same identity. Okay. Sometimes people feel they have changed and that the world has become vague or dreamlike, less real, lacking in significance. And that's from uh, Wikipedia. It hurts that I can't be myself. I can't feel complete. I don't have a sense of personal identity when I'm around this person. They're attacking me. They're breaking my character down, which puts me in this position where I'm going to go back to my childlike state. If you're being in this presence with a parent. Because that's what's comfortable for her. But what's good for you? You're a grown woman acting like a child. What's good for you? You see? Why do you have to change who you are to appease these family members and friends? Well, you don't understand. It's a complicated process. Well, how are you going to grow with the one true God into what he has called you to be if you've got to keep disconnecting every time you're with this person? I just want to be me. Some folks will say, well, just be you then. But it's so complicated. How about you distance yourself from the complication then? Because the, the complication isn't so much you. It's them putting their dramas and traumas upon you, putting their living vicariously through you stuff. 
I don't want to be this way, this way that you created for me, mama, daddy, sister, brother, cousin. I don't want to be this way, and I refuse to be this this way. So I have taken up a new persona. This new persona is a God-given one. This is one where I'm healthy in mind, body, and spirit. I know you don't recognize me. I know you don't understand me. I know that this person who I've become, you are confused by me. But in the name of Jesus, I walk according to who God has called me to walk. And so if you cannot ride with me, then I will see you possibly on the other side in heaven, hopefully. And I said, hallelujah. (laughs) Look, we don't have time for this foolishness that people are putting upon us. You got a father who's provoking his children to anger. You know what the Bible says, Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. He went through some drama and trauma with his father, and now he thinks it's okay to put his drama and trauma upon us. Uh Uh-uh. God said, I am taking you from that father. He thinks he is all-knowing. He thinks he is omnipotent. He thinks he's God. And uh, no, he's not. He will never be me. (laughs) Hallelujah. That's why a man is brought down low. He's brought to his all fours, messing with an almighty God. You see, some folks never connected the dots. Why, oh Lord, did I struggle like I did? The Lord said, you are like your father. You are stubborn hearted, man. You are like your mother. You are a narcissistic, self-absorbed, self-centered person who needs to be humbled. Every time, if you notice that you esteem yourself, I bring you down. Every time you exalt yourself and you don't allow other people to exalt you, I bring you down low. I shame you in front of everyone. That is a word that someone I know didn't want to hear, but God is on a move today. Hallelujah. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. Somebody is going to change from their wicked ways. You see, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Jeremiah 17, 9. Thank you, Heavenly Father. When you're around narcissists, they mess with your mindset, your being, as I mentioned with depersonalization. Proverbs 17, 22 says a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. So you're prematurely aging. If this is a bit of motivation for you to get away from some narcissistic man or woman, child or beast you're prematurely aging being in their presence they're crushing your spirit that's what's happening why do i feel this way every time i'm around around this person i I can't stand it Mm -hmm. they're crushing your spirit god wants you to come from out of that but how do i do it there's resources out there you put your need in the google you put your local community in the google and then you allow google To show you where you can get the necessary resources so that you're no longer relying or depending on this family, on this person. Mark 17, 21 through 23, for from within out of the heart of man comes what? Evil thoughts. You got that right. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these things, all these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Okay, so it's not just narcissism that we're dealing with. There's other spirits that are at work here that brought about the narcissism. Oh, somebody wasn't ready for that. So if you don't deal with these other issues, you don't get to the bottom of these other issues. Narcissism is just a label. See, God, he unpacks. God, he explores. God, he delves deep. God heals. When you don't bring God into your practice, when you don't bring God on the journey, then all you got is someone who's going to keep showing up, but they're never going to get the healing that they need. This is a matter of spirit or Jesus or spirits. And some folks don't have a deliverance ministry coupled with their psychological ministry. (laughs) Jesus, Jesus. You see, 
So you're listening to the psychologist and yes, it makes sense. And thank you so much for that information. But I need deliverance. We've got some ministries out there that yes, there are those that are false or what have you. This is why you do your research. Deliverance ministry, local community, find one near you. We need some laying on of hands. We need some folks who's crying out for hours and hours and hours on end. We need to break those spirits, those generational spirits. Some of it, it was not just the person who showed up at the practice. It is the mother that's that way. It is the grandmother that that's that way. It is the great grandmother. It's the father. It's the grandfather. It's the great grandfather. It, there's a long history here. And if we're going to draw the line in the sand and we're going to break generational narcissism, then Somebody has to be willing to be unpacked. Someone has to be willing to go through the deliverance process. Someone needs to be willing to have a personal faith because you can have the temporal healing from a man telling you all about yourself and you, you know, using some tips and tricks to help yourself out, but it's temporary. I want long lasting. Hallelujah. You see. And when I asked the Lord about that, the Lord provided me with his word. The Lord provided me with ministers, deacons, evangelists, folks that prayed upon me, not P-R-E-Y-E-D, but prayed P-R-A-Y-E-D. You got to be careful who you allow to lay your hand, lay their hands on because the demonic is also praying on who he can devour. Lord Jesus, he's a narcissist too, you know, let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, in this age, <laughs> let him become a fool that he may become wise. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. I mean, there's a lot th that I need to figure out. I don't care that I do have a degree. I don't care if I did, you know, get recognition on all sorts of, you know, television shows and channels and whatever else. Yeah. And they're aging rapidly. A lot of these gurus, I'm watching it unfold right before them. You wanted a piece of the algorithm. You wanted a piece of the pie. You got it. And now you're fading fast because God isn't with some folks. It's just their training. You see, mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Looking wild, some of them looking like they're on some kind of medicine. Uh huh. I see some of these folks in the spiritual realm. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. I'm listening in the spiritual realm because we get quite a few people who come through, especially when a word like narcissism comes up in the algorithm. And I want to make sure that my my message that I'm delivering as the Lord uses me a mere vessel is not like everybody else. You see. It has to be about God, not about so much the psychology behind what is happening in a national and international scale. By design, there were those who were raised up to be narcissistic who then became leaders and the public relations team that gathered around put out these types of messages that celebrate narcissism they also had inventors that created things that aided in narcissism okay if you continue to feed the wheel then what happens is over time, you become just like the narcissist. When I say feed the will, that means that rather than being in the word daily, studying and showing thyself approved as a so-called believer, person of faith, you're feeding the will of narcissism that is out there in social media. Then you start to love on self rather than be concerned about the need of the people. We don't need more politicians through social influencing platforms. And that's what some of these people look like to me. Although they're not politicians, but they remind me of politicians in the way that they carry themselves on video and in audio. Because that worked for centuries, 
they use the same tactics. But if you're enlightened, if you're discerning, you see it and you stay away from it. I don't want to follow after that narcissistic individual who's using and abusing, taking his or her platform to insult, to belittle Lord Jesus. The impact, long-term, short-term, once again, once again, doesn't matter. When I started off this message talking about anxiety, very well mind gets into, verywellmind.com gets into the effects the website says many narcissistic abuse survivors live with anxiety after experiencing narcissistic abuse you may experience extreme fear or anxiety in relationships with new people okay those who leave abusive relationships may experience separation anxiety leading them to feel panicked and disoriented when they're not with their abusers so when we look at this from a spiritual perspective, God says that he doesn't want us anxious. He doesn't want us worried. He doesn't want us to have anxiety. So then if that's what we have, then where did it come from? It's not just a matter of what we experienced in an abusive relationship or growing up, growing up around narcissists, but it is also living a life for a period of time without the one true God. You see, there was the void for years I could put my hand up. So I'm operating in the flesh, not of the spirit. I'm being my own God rather than leaning on the one who created me. You did not create your mind. You did not create your eyes, your feet, your, your arms, your heartbeat, your lungs. You didn't do that. I know sometimes it's hard for people to wrap their head around this almighty God because you can't see him. You can't feel him. You can't put your arms around him, but he very much exists. And if you want to take some folks at their word, when they say that God is real and you want to take God himself at his word, then I dare you to start praying. That's where it started with me. You know what? I'm going to take these believers up on what they're saying. I'm going to start praying. I'm going to cancel out the fact that in the past, God didn't answer my prayers and all that. I'm really going to take God at his word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read this word too. I'm going to ponder on these scriptures. I'm going to let them resonate with me. I'm going to unpack myself using the scriptures. And then, of course, I'm going to get around those who believe in God and who are professional counselors who are going to also help me unpack some of these things that I can't see with regard to myself and God along the way, he put these very intelligent, you know, highly skilled people in my life who helped me here and there through conversation, just simply conversation, didn't have to pay for it, you see. And so you sit there and you're having this conversation and you're hearing how they solve their issues through God. Mm -hmm. And then it brings about this inner peace and now you're able to get through another day instead of worried about what this one thinks and what that one thinks. And I don't know if I can have a good relationship with people because of what happened to me. And oh, there I go again, messing up with this person. Okay, so you dust yourself off, right? And you try, you try and try some more. If your symptoms include anxiety attacks, panic attacks, or hypervigilance after being abused by a narcissist, know that these symptoms will ease over time. And that's what happened. I can put my hands up through prayer and fasting, you know, watching my health, watching who I associated with going forward, not going back to the people who... Uh, I felt comfortable around the reason why I got mixed up with some abusers was because sometimes you just mimic what you grew up with. So when I stopped being around those folks and I had time to see things for what they really were, I started to heal. But if you continue to be around folks that corrupt your good manners and scripture cautions us about this sort of thing, then how are you ever going to grow? So you need to go on a sabbatical, someone away from the traumas, the dramas, the folks who they just keep perpetuating a cycle of abuse, who keep your anxiety levels up. Some folks talked about depression. They've gone on various audios listening for a bit of encouragement on this channel. 
survivors of uh, narcissistic abuse, they often deal with feelings of worthlessness after months or even years of being told how useless and stupid they are by their abuser. Well, we don't condone that sort of behavior. And matter of fact, I delete any comments, whether they're attacking my uh, listeners when I see them or even myself. We don't accept that name calling. We don't accept that, uh, you know, stuff that people put upon them because they feel worthless. And so they want to try to make you feel worthless because they don't want to deal with the truth. You see about their evil ways. They don't want to walk away from an audio message and be held accountable that now you've got to do something about the anxiety. You've got to do something about these side effects, having gone through narcissistic abuse and that you're no longer going to keep talking about you're a victim. You're a victim. You see, after years of being manipulated and gaslighted, you may also isolate yourself, which can make feelings of depression worse, according to VeryWellMind.com. You see, there's post-traumatic stress. As a narcissistic abuse survivor, you will likely have symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Your brain will be on high alert. You're looking out for danger. This is because the traumatic events triggered a fight or flight response. So when I was in the abusive relationship, I was in either fight or flight. I was either I'm going to fight him because he put his hands on me or I'm going to pack up and I'm going to leave. And it was in and out, in and out, in and out. Narcissistic people, they do this sort of thing. Today, I love you because you're doing for me. Tomorrow, I don't love you because you're not doing for me. Narcissistic people are thinking that they're better than everyone else. Narcissistic people are ignoring you because they think they're better than you. They have this type of attitude where, you know... If I can't get what I want, well, you're not going to get what you want. They play these little tit for tat type of games, you see. And so I take all of that and I give it over to the one true God. And the next thing you know, they're falling by their own sword. You see, I go into the book of song because I'm not going to sit there and be victimized by anyone within the first five minutes of talking to you. I'm going to know whether or not you are a survivor of narcissism. I'm going to know whether or not you're going to come at me if I tell you some real truth about yourself. And this is why I'm going to exit the conversation. I didn't get much out of that. No, you're not going to get much out of it because I know that you're going to end up doing some things because you're not ready to heal that are going to try to entrap me or get me to say something that I have no business saying so that you can say, see, I told you she was nothing but a, you see, because narcissists like to do that sort of thing. You see, they try to find the faults to puff themselves up, Lord Jesus. So as a result, anything associated with those memories, right? Those traumatic events can trigger an anxiety attack. So I was thinking about something about how this person had been treating me for a long period of time. Next thing you know, the, the feelings on the inside overwhelmed me and I had a full blown anxiety attack where par paramedics and everything was called. OK, and I had not discussed the details of it until years later when I wrote When Mothers Cry. And then the individual was able to connect the dots and was like, oh, my goodness, now I understand what's been going on. You see, if you hold yourself accountable to how you've been behaving towards someone and how it is just slowly eroding them, there's the likelihood that. They will come back around, especially in relationships that are on their way out. They might come back around and see that, oh, you are treating me kinder. You are being more polite. You're being more respectful. Okay, I just might stick around. But we've got people who they talk about how the wife left or how the husband left or how, you know, they couldn't stand being around some people. But they won't hold themselves accountable to how they hurt that person for years and years and years. And they don't want to feel that hurt of the separation. That person nine times out of 10 warned you that how you're making me feel is causing me to feel this way. And I'm leaving you. And they can't say it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. And then when that person officially left, now they're cut through and through. I can't believe this is happening to me. The Lord says, believe it, believe it. It's happening to you because there are things that you've got to do. It's not just about a good roof over somebody's head, right? <laughs> about a car in a driveway, about paying some bills. It's about what you do to make them feel the way they feel. If I want somebody to be with me for long term, I'm going to make them feel special. I'm going to make them feel like, you know, 
I want them to be in my presence. But if they've been mistreating me, disrespected, um, I, I feel disrespected, they're ignoring me or what have you, I'm going to make them feel uncomfortable. No, I, I'm glad you feel like you're not welcome. I'm glad you feel like you're not loved because I don't want you. I don't want you, period. This is what a woman will do for some of you all trying to understand a woman and how she operates at times. This is what she does when she's had enough because she's only going to take but so much from a man saying he apologizes, he's sorry, and he's going to, you know, be better next time. Okay, when? When is that? Because I need you to show me that. You need to give me something that makes me want to stay. You need to do something to make me feel like I want to be in your presence. Like I want you to be in my presence because I'm doing A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. See, if you're doing A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, you can have that conversation with somebody. But if you know that you're not hooking them up, helping them out, doing what's right, you have no business talking about you miss them and you wish that they could and all this. You see, we got the narcissists who they do this sort of thing to us. Okay, they do it. They treat you evil, say all sorts of evil. Okay, silent treatment, whatever. And then, oh, can you come back? Can you talk to me? Can you this? Can you that? Okay, you got relatives who've done this sort of thing. And they use the holiday events to feed off your energy. And, and they know they're going to be good for that 24-hour period. And then... <laughs> How many went back to their old ways after Thanksgiving, after Christmas, after New Year's, after Valentine's Day, after St. Patrick's Day, <laughs> Lord Jesus, after Hanukkah, after Kwanzaa, and whatever other event, birthday, wedding shower, baby shower. They use those holidays, don't they? And they use them in such a way so that it lures you back in. That's why I don't play. I don't play around them holidays. Mm-mm. I I talk to you guys when I'm passionate about some things re with regard to holidays. That's from years ago. Okay. I know that there was one listener a while back who left a comment talking about, sounds like you still got, you know, uh, you're still caught up in it or you're still trapped in it. No, excuse me. But anybody who's listened to this channel a long time knows that I am not caught up, not connected to. I talk from past experience so that it helps people who are in it right now, but I'm free, <laughs> been free for years. Okay. I have put up boundaries all around myself, a fortress, if you will. And I don't play when it comes to all of that sentimental business, because I know that narcissists use it. It is a weapon. <laughs> it is, it is their am ammunition. Okay. It's their supply and they use it well in order to get people to open up their doors in order to get people to do what they want. And some of you all, you keep falling for it over and over again, year after year. We can't get you free when you keep going back to the abuser. That's why I don't get on that ride with some folks. When they tell me they've been in an abusive relationship for years, I'm like, oh, and this is your, how many times have you gotten away? Uh, this is like my first. We got about six more times before you're going to be totally, you know, out of that relationship. Why? Why? Why does it have to take that many times? Because you're still weak. You're still talking all positively, how loving and kind. And he did this and he did that for me. And, you know, Valentine's Day, he was this way and that way with me and. See, uh-uh, no, sorry, mm -mm. you're not ready to leave. You just stay right there and continue to deal with what you're dealing with until you're ready to leave. You see, family members and friends, we get tired of hearing, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave, okay, when? So meanwhile, her loss of sense of self and self-worth is eroding. Same thing for a man who's with an abusive woman who, I don't want to hurt you. You slap me, you punch me, you kick me and everything else. With one blow, I know I could knock you clear across the side of this room, but I'm not going to do it. I wish you would stop doing it. And she does it again. And she does it again. When are you going to leave in Jesus' name? Thank you, O Heavenly Father. So 
So you may feel like you are not good enough or that you did something to cause the abuse in the first place. This can lead to shame and embarrassment, which may often stop you from reaching out for help. So if you're going to reach out for help, be ready to leave. That's for someone, not for all, because I know many of you all, I have seen the comments, you have left. And I'm so grateful. Oh, I'm so grateful. God is a good God, a righteous God. I rejoice with you and stay away from, okay, make sure you change that phone number and don't give them your address or her, your address. And uh, those who you are mutually connected with and who tend to side with the narcissist, no, stop updating them with your personal information. Please, 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 and thank you, okay? Because you're just, once again, giving them something to abuse you and use you with. I want you to forgive yourself. Someone told me this years ago, back when I was, you know, still a victim. Look, you made the error, right? In judgment, but forgive yourself. But don't stick around those narcissists who won't let you forgive yourself. Want to keep throwing up your mistakes. I haven't talked to you in years and you want to talk about some old stuff. Wow. Okay. Boop. Sorry. Got to cut you off again. You see, why do we do this? Right? We go back to the people who, once again, started this foolishness to begin with. So God is releasing us. Hallelujah. He's releasing us from all of this. He's releasing us from just all of these side effects it takes some time but he's releasing us from even the physical symptoms right those headaches and stomach aches and body aches that i talked about the difficulty sleeping if you look at what you're doing during the waking part of your day right you'll start to see a change if you address those issues while you're awake next thing you know you're sleeping good Next thing you know, I don't have those headaches like I once did. Sometimes a narcissist is at the workplace. I kept having all sorts of headaches at a particular workplace. That's because the narcissistic in, in energy was all around, okay? And I was witnessing people go through narcissistic injury from the narcissist. So that's enough to give you a headache, a stomach ache, a body ache. I got to a point where I didn't even want to go into the job. The Lord said, I'm cutting you off. And so he cut me off, okay? I don't know what it is sometimes about some of these jobs, Jesus help us, but they're just not good jobs. They're not, they're terrible. They're absolutely terrible. I don't know who puts these managers and leaders narcissistic to the core in these positions other than Satan himself, you know, I mean, what we got Satan in the, in the HR team. I mean, it's ridiculous, the evil. So many people left these establishments that I once worked. Um, one particular establishment I was made the example of, and then everybody else followed suit. So, yeah, terrible. Uh, 2022 was terrible for jobs. And 2021, it was okay. But, oh my goodness. There was still a lot of evil going on and nobody wanted to do things about stealing. I mean, things that could be federal crimes. I got to go, you know, <laughs> the narcissist got such a hold on you that you won't even do anything about stealing at your organization. Wow. And then one particular organization did and they drained the swamp. But, hey, I was so traumatized. I didn't want to go back there. Mm -mm. Memory loss, right? There's some cognitive problems after narcissistic abuse. It may become difficult for you to concentrate on everyday tasks. Okay, you may experience a memory loss, a short-term loss. It could be any type of loss. And then, of course, there's all the emotional issues, the effects on the kids. If kids are watching you go through this sort of thing, um, you know, the, the just the cycle, the continuous cycle, as I mentioned with the, the domestic violence survivors, um, well, victims that go back and then they go back and they go back some more and then eventually some become survivors or some end up in their graves prematurely. Um, some of our, our uh, some of our listeners, they were uh, people pleasers as a result of being with the narcissist. And I do have audio in the past years ago that I put together about people pleasing. Okay. Because the narcissist put such a uh, um, puts uh, such high 
marks, if you will, for you to attain in a relationship with them, that when you're in it for so long with them, you're always wondering how people feel or what people think, you know, stuff like that, looking for people to accept you. You know, it's, it's just messy. The longer you stay with a narcissist, I think you have uh, determined from this message, the harder it is to break free. So the side effects are there. Work on them. Okay. Work on them. The scriptures are there too, to, you know, study. Um, when I looked at some of, um, the things that people have gone through over the years, uh, with prayer and with fasting, as well as myself, it helped immensely. All right. When you see things that the narcissist is doing, um, you know, you're like, okay, I know I've got to safeguard myself. I've got to protect myself. Um, sometimes it's that father. Sometimes it's the mother who that narcissist has been around. And they're just exhibiting the same behaviors. Matthew 10 and 37 says, whoever loves father or mother more than me, right? More than God is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So let's get our priorities straight. God is who created you. That's where you should be focused as you're getting out of this crazy making relationship, partnership, business arrangement, what have you. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Second Timothy 1, 7. And you feel like you're losing control when you're in a relationship with a narcissist. And sometimes you tend to be that way once you're out because of what you had to do being in that relationship with the narcissist. Revelation 21, eight said, but as for the cowardly, right? A lot of cowardly narcissists, they don't want to face, you know, the evil that we've exposed, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. And let me tell you, narcissists, they are like this. You got a, a murdering narcissist. You got a sexually immoral narcissist. You got a narcissist who's a sorcerer. You got a narcissist who's an idolater, a lion narcissist. You've got a faithless narcissist. Okay. We got all sorts of narcissists. Their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. So don't let anyone tell you otherwise, unless they confess and repent, change from their wicked ways. And some folks know who they are. They've come through here and they said it outwardly that they were narcissists. Okay. So you said it. So fix it. So get the necessary resources. Get out of that because there is a lake that burns with fire and sulfur. Someone says in the spiritual realm, they mock that. They laugh at that. They say, you believe that? Yes. Yes, I believe it. See, if you have gotten so close to death that God himself turns you back, <laughs> there's for good reason. There's for good reason. There is beyond the natural, beyond your five senses, beyond the worldly. There is a world beyond this one. Okay. And there is a heaven and there is a hell. And yes, man and woman got some facts incorrect. Because they were coming up with their own version and they deviated from the scripture. But there is a place for people who don't want to get their acts together while they're above ground. They think that, oh, you know, um, once I die, I just die. That's it. But there's a judgment that happens. Okay. Scripture clearly tells us that. And so I don't know why people want to skip over things and pretend like folks are just making up things. Well, they just created that because they just wanted, you know, the world to be in line. They wanted laws. You know, Christians were all over the place trying to, you know, indoctrinate and all that. I don't even need at this point to go precept by precept with folks in scripture. All I do is I look at, I look at the, look at just our our sky, our trees, our <laughs> nature, being one in nature. That's, oh, Lord Jesus. If you want to deny a, cre deny a creator, when you hear that light, when you see that lightning, when you hear the thunder, <laughs> you want to deny a creator, Lord Jesus. 
I, I just, I don't have patience for that sort of thing. I just move on. There are teachers that God gave them patience for that. And you're welcome to go precept by precept about the realness of God and all of that. And the realness of heaven and hell. But there is a hell for a narcissist. And I will state that if you don't want to get your act together, if you know somebody who doesn't want to get their act together in terms of walking with the one true God, in terms of unpacking all of this foolishness that they're putting upon other people, they don't want to get counseling and all of that. There's a hell for them. Okay. And so we have talked about this time and time again, first Corinthians six, nine through 11. There's that nine 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. There it is right there in the scriptures. I didn't make that up. That is not my personal opinion. That is Bible. And such were some of you. Notice past tense. And such were some of you. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. And so we just want some folks to be washed just like we were. Okay, because we know the stress, we know the anxiety, the depression, the issues with regard to being mixed up with a narcissist. We know the abuse that takes place. Okay, it is better to be alone than to deal with people just because you want some sex or just because you want a companion who are narcissists. I will be alone. You hear me? I will be alone if I've got to spend the rest of my life having to deal with all sorts of narcissistic people. Mm -mm. Nope. Lord, I'm just going to have to just cut people off then. If this is all we got, then no. Mm -mm. You see? And for some of you all, until you get yourself together, you know, that's what you're attracting. So I understand why right now you're isolating yourself, you see, because I got healing that I need to work on because I went through that. I went through the isolating of myself because I, I, Lord, you know me right now. And the Lord even agreed. Yeah, you're not good right now with people. So you're going to have to distance yourself. Right. And so I spent a year. Where all I did was go to work and it was the type of job where I did not have to deal with people. Praise the Lord. And um, I isolated myself. I went straight home. I, you know, went to the grocery store. Didn't do any talking. No standing in line. Chit chatting with people. None of it. Because there was a lot of work that needed to be done. And I was just so nervous. And I was afraid of what might come out of my mouth because I had been with a narcissist uh for long enough to know that he was a narcissist looking back at that time I just said selfish right but he was next level selfish and next level abusive too physically abusive you know I mean I went through a lot in that relationship and for some of you all if that is what you're going through right now go over to laboring to love and abusive mate.com uh, you can also get my book I got books. Um, tell me, mother, you're sorry. Say goodbye to dad. Socially sweet, privately cruel, abusive men. She's crazy. Got one for the men who are being battered as well. Um, met one in person, a man who had been battered by his wife repeatedly over and over again. He would come to work. He had scars on his face, on his neck. Another one whose ex met him. He had literally scratches where she clawed at his skin down his face. So it's not just the women, it's the men too. And then years ago, there was one who, a guy who I was fond of, but he was not about to break up with his abusive girlfriend. And I was hurt by that because she had him. She had his mind. He didn't even think and talk logically at times. So... Yes, it is out there. The narcissism is running rampant. It's running wild. It's in leadership. It's it's everywhere. And we've got to safeguard ourselves. Do not, do not, I repeat, do not break bread with or stay in the presence of self-absorbed people, prideful, boastful, think they're better than everybody else. They will corrupt you.
I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, NM Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thank you for your generous donations. Blessings to you.